Hello and welcome back to Wine Form. Today we are on my floor. Alrighty. I'm also, I'm like sitting on a floor pillow though, so I'm a little civilized. Either way. Today we are tasting three different Pinot Grigios. I did one Pinot Grigio tasting a few weeks ago and not gonna lie, I wasn't enthralled. It just did not jazz me. It's like, okay, maybe I don't like Pinot Grigios until one of my lovely viewers left in the comments that I should try one from Washington State. I'm gonna do that. And well, beyond just trying one from Washington State, I decided what the heck and I'm gonna try one from uh, Italy and Oregon as well. So I've got three different regions, different from the California Pinot Grigio I tried in that first episode, and I'm gonna try to find a Pinot Grigio that I'm really jazzed by. Uh, that being said, I am also excited to announce that I am now taking W set classes uh, level one in wines. So to add to my college wine education, I will now be getting the seal of she knows what she's talking about, which I'm super excited. Uh, hopefully as I go on from here is there are four levels and I plan on doing all four, then the knowledge that I am able to give to you guys is gonna be even more and more thorough. I digress. We have three Pinot Grigios. Well, this one's a Pinot Gris, but the grapes are pretty similar. Pinot Grigio is what the grape is called in Italy. Pinot Gris is what it's called in France. It's the same grape. The nuances are probably gonna be slightly different, but as is every grape from various regions, even if it is the same varietal. So, the wines we are trying today. We are trying Prophecies 2019 Pinot Grigio. This one is from the uh, Delle Venezie area, which is in the northeast of Italy. The second wine we are trying is the uh, is Portlandia's 2018 Pinot Gris from the Willamette Valley which is just a bit south of Portland, so Oregon wine. And the third and final Pinot Grigio we are trying is the Washington State one. This one is 14 Hands Wineries 2018 Pinot Grigio, um, and it just says Washington State. I don't really get um, a particular location for this one. However, it says that it was cellared and bottled in by 14 Hands Winery in Patterson, Washington. So I don't know if they got the grapes from that same area as well, but the grapes are from Washington State. So I'm gonna take notes as we go, but first let me talk about, uh, or just refresh on what Pinot Grigio is generally supposed to taste like. The textbook flavor profile for Pinot Grigio tends to be very apple-y and very citrusy, um, very light flavors, and it is a dry wine. Uh, now, whether or not I get exactly those flavors from these three wines, we will see. Now, what I'm going to do is I am going to pull out my glasses, get my little palate cleanser ready, and then uh, open these wines and I'll get right back to you guys. Alrighty. We are going to do something a little fun. We are going to compare uh, each category one by one for each of the wines. Prophecy from Della Venezia. It is its alcohol is 12.5%. Portlandia from the Willamette Valley, its alcohol is 13.5%. And 14 Hands, it is from Washington State, and its alcohol is 12.5%. So let's look at color. I don't know if it's too obvious on camera, but right away I can see a pretty obvious color difference between especially the Prophecy wines and the Portlandia and 14 Hands wines. So Prophecy has a very faint uh, lemon yellow color and the Portlandia and 14 Hands wines have the same almost, um, well it's more of a golden yellow, but they're all very light. None of them have any sediment remaining in them. They're all very clear wines, um, which means the winemakers did a great job. So color aside, Let's get to the next part. So now that we have looked at our wines, we get to smell them. So we're going to start with Prophecy. Ooh, that smells wonderful. So Prophecy, I get a um, slightly unripe orange. It's not quite lemon. It really does smell a bit like an orange rind. So we're getting that citrus. I'm also getting a sweet, crisp apple. I think the fruity scents on this one are a lot stronger than I 
I thought they would be. And I'm getting the faintest hint of a grass sort of aroma. Unripe orange, crisp apple, and grass. Now let's smell Portlandia. I did pour a little bit more of this by accident because I miscounted. I'm gonna sniff my wrist to sort of cleanse my nose of the previous one. That smells entirely different. That is fascinating. This one's a lot more perfumey. I'm getting less fruit um, out of the out of Portlandia's Pinot Gris. I'm getting notes of jasmine, lemon leaf. It's it's um because I would say I would say lemon leaf because it has the green, the green and the citrus aren't quite overpowering one another. I'll call it lemongrass. So we're getting jasmine and lemongrass. There's one more that I'm having trouble placing my finger on, but we'll get it. We'll get it. Orange blossom. So this one is much more um, herbal than the first. So we got jasmine, lemongrass, and orange blossom. I find it kind of fascinating that this one, the fruit, it's very fruit forward, and this one, it's very herbal forward. I will cleanse my nose again by sniffing my wrist, and then I will go ahead and I will give 14 hands a sniff. Whoa. Whoa. Sharp cheesy. Hmm. I'm getting a bit of, um, the smell of, uh, freshly fertilized. I, it sounds like a very weird descriptor, but I'm getting a hint of, um, a sharp cheese, a little bit of manure. Never thought I'd say that for a wine, but we'll see. We'll keep going. And lemongrass. The, it has the very faintest hint of a fruit, a very light fruit, almost like a honeydew melon. So, okay. So we've got... <laughs> That is fascinating. We have a sharp cheese, probably like a sharp Vermont cheddar, uh, manure, <laughs> sharp Vermont cheddar, manure, grass, lemongrass, and melon. That is, that is really interesting. So now that we have smelled all our wines, uh, let's go ahead and taste it. And we'll go ahead and we'll start again with prophecy. Okay. So out of prophecy, I was tasting not just an apple, the crisp apple I smelled, but I tasted a very green apple. And I also tasted lemon rind. Um, and then the final one that was very faint, it was a sort of um, a hint of a saltiness. The, it has a medium acidity. It makes me salivate a little. And I say the alcohol is kind of medium too. As far as body, I would say it's very light body. The feeling of it doesn't really coat my mouth. It really does recede, and I would also call it dry. Now, even though it is a light bodied wine, I'd say the, the finish is closer to medium, uh, which is kind of interesting because the flavor of, especially the crisp green apple, the green apple really does linger. So I'm gonna call this one like short medium finish. That was really, Tasty. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and cleanse my palate with a cracker. All right, let's try Portlandia. We established it has jasmine, lemongrass, and orange blossom scents, like aromatics, but what does it taste like? Let's find out. Ooh, apple, yeast, and orange. Okay. That one tastes like apple, yeast, and orange. Who to thunk? That one has a very light acidity compared to this first one. So I'm gonna call it, I'm gonna call it light acid. It also has a medium alcohol to it though. It is dry and this one had a distinctly short finish. I will say that it had a shorter finish than this first one. And like the first one, very light bodied wine. Um, in terms of the feeling in my mouth, once again, it dissipated very quickly. It didn't feel like it coated it very much. Light bodied. All right. So I'm going to cleanse my palate and my nose once again, sniff my wrist, eat a cracker, and we'll try the last one. Okay, much better. So let's try our final Pinot Grigio, the 14 hands wine from Washington State. Okay, so this one, the flavor starts out bitter green. It fades into lemon juice, and then it has a little bit of a pepperiness to it, but it's very faint. So. Yeah, bitter green, almost like if you've ever had like a dandelion salad, it tastes a bit like dandelion. So I'm getting 
dandelion and lemon juice and a hint of pepper. Very interesting. Although it only made me salivate a little, which is interesting. I think it made me salivate more than this one did. This one made me salivate more, but it didn't make me salivate as much as this one. I am gonna call it a medium acidity though, light bodied once again, and medium alcohol. I also think that uh, this one had a short finish. Okay, these are all delicious. The Prophecy Pinot Grigio I think would go very well with some sort of a grapefruit salad. I think that would be quite tasty. Although I'm allergic to grapefruit, so, but if you're not allergic to grapefruit, I think it'd be good with this grapefruit salad. I think the Portlandia Pinot Gris would taste really good with a chicken salad. I think it has a little bit more umami than this one does. So this leans more on the savory side. So I do think it would taste good with some sort of light chicken salad. And the 14 hands uh, Pinot Grigio, I can actually see pairing this with a very light, like a leek soup. Well, it felt like it had a bit more of a savory edge to it than even these two did. So I do think this one would taste really good with a light leek soup. So all in all, um, these were really good wine. I'm so excited. Um, thank you for suggesting I try Pinot Grigio not from California because wow, it is so much better. Um, it's amazing the amount of flavor I was able to get out of these wines made from this delicate grape. It goes to show that more than what kind of wine are you drinking, where you're getting your wine grapes from says so much about how that wine is gonna turn out. Now, there are absolutely um, common sort of uh, standard flavor profiles for various wines. Just because you get a Pinot Grigio, it doesn't mean it's gonna taste like what the standard Pinot Grigio tastes like, and that goes for any wine. So, all the more reason to buy wines and try them. Uh, I will go ahead and I will leave in the description box how much I spent on each of these wines, uh, as I forgot to mention that. In terms of my favorite, uh, I really shocked myself and I think my favorite one is actually Prophecy wine, uh, Prophecy's Pinot Grigio. It is the lightest in color, so uh, I thought while looking at it that flavor-wise it was going to be water, but it wasn't. It was packed full of delicate flavor, and I think that I appreciate how much fruitier this one is, which is also really fascinating because this is the Italian wine, and these are the American wines, but the Italian Pinot Grigio is fruitier than the American Pinot Grigios I tried. Uh, while they are all delicious, and I actually really do love them all, this one is my favorite. So yeah, I'm gonna buy more Pinot Grigio from Italy. <laughs> these make me feel like I, if you've ever seen beer yoga, I feel like I should be doing like wine yoga with these. I think I could make it happen. And it really just, it feels like springtime and it feels like summer, uh, which is kind of nice considering it's, it's getting colder now. And well, I, I love the winter as much as the next person. There is something really nice about a bit of summer sun. I think that these all have that nice spring and summer sun bottled up inside. I will absolutely put the uh, information about these wines in the description. 
If you have more wine suggestions, please send them my way because this was a lot of fun. Yeah, I absolutely encourage you guys to go and get the same wine from a couple different regions and try it. And you will notice, I think you will notice a difference. Your palate is a lot more sophisticated than you give it credit for sometimes. Thank you for joining me today for this episode of Wine Reform. I, I look forward to the next video. I look forward to seeing you guys again. Uh, if you like what you're seeing, give me a thumbs up. Hit that like button. If you've had an experience with wine that you just, you know, you want to talk about, I want to hear about it. I'd love to. Drop it in the comments. If you really like what you're seeing uh, and you haven't already, be sure to subscribe. And I, I think it's on this side. Pretty darn sure it's on that side. Be sure to subscribe. And if you want to know when I put up videos, uh, there's a bell icon that you can click on right next to that subscribe button. And it just gives you a little alert when I put a video out. I release every other Wednesday and every Friday, but the past couple of weeks things have gotten hectic and I've been a little bit behind the curve in terms of when I release things, so the bell icon helps a lot. Thank you again, and uh, I will see you guys next week. Bye-bye!